We have Grant Fisher, second place in the men's 5,000 and heading to Tokyo. And let's start off with, can you walk us through that, that 5,000 today? Yeah, um, you know, a bit of a just hectic 5K. Um, the race was kind of back and forth. We had a lot of lead changes. Uh, it was pretty choppy in the pack. Uh, people were getting clipped up quite a bit. Um, the pace was was moderately honest. You know, nobody took it with the intent to drop the entire field, I think. Um, but people also didn't want to hang around and make it like a 14 flat race. Um, it was warm out there, but it wasn't that hot, I'd say. Like, everyone knew it was going to be hot. Everyone had ice vests on. Everyone was prepared for the heat. Uh, we were all in it. So I don't think the heat played that much of a factor. Um, but yeah, I just tried to move my way up, be in a nice position, be ready to to cover any moves. Um, there are a couple of really dangerous people in this field. Uh, Paul, Woody, um, you know, Garrett uh, can, can push hard. Jenkins can push hard. Emmanuel Bohr can push hard. Just guys that I wanted to keep my eye on just in case they, uh, you know, made a big surge and tried to break the field at a random point. And uh, yeah, I felt like I, I was in good position, came into the last lap just right off of Paul's shoulder and uh, tried to push him a little bit. And uh, he, uh, he responded to each of my moves, um, held me off on uh, the back stretch, held me off on the corner, and then, you know, try to give it everything he can on the final hundred. Um, but yeah, made another team. Uh, Woody made another team. So it's, it's fun, you know, doing it with your teammate. It's a good feeling. Uh, it's comforting just out there in the race, just having the guy you train with every day there with you. And uh, it's, uh, it'll be fun in Tokyo with him. Next question is from Derek Call, Runner's World. Congrats. You mentioned in the NBC interview how you appreciated Ch Chilimo's strategy to ensure you and Woody wouldn't pass him. Did you feel trapped with him in front and Cooper surging behind you? Um, no, I didn't feel trapped. Um, you know, that's just how you race. I, I don't think it was anything illegal that that was done. Um, the, the most advantageous thing to do on the last lap is to run the shortest line yourself and force everybody else to run a longer line. Um, you know, we closed pretty hard today and, you know, tenths of seconds are really important. So if you have good position and someone else has bad position, you don't want to just give it to them. Um, if, if, you know, for example, if, if I can run a 55 at the end of the race, I want to force people to have to run a 54 to get around me um, rather than, you know, getting beat by someone maybe that can just run a 10th faster than me. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's how you race. You put yourself in the best position possible while, uh, you know, limiting other people's options. Um, that's just smart racing. Next question is from Scott Douglas, Runner's World. Do you plan to double in Tokyo? Will you decide for sure before USATF submits the team roster on July 1st? Uh, yeah, I do have to decide before July 1st. Right now I'm leaning towards the double. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, really happy with how I competed over the past week. Um, 20,000 meters worth of race and it, it's a lot, um, takes, takes a toll on your body. So, um, probably recover. And, uh, I'm, right now I tend to double. Next question from Eric Bull, dystat.com. Only six American men have ever placed in the top three in both the, both the 5,000 and 10,000 at the same Olympic trials. And only three have done so in the past 60 years. What does it mean for you and Woody to become the first pair ever to do it in the same year, especially being teammates? <laughs> yeah, it's a great feeling. Um, you know, Woody's a great competitor, great teammate, great racer, um, a guy that I've lived with, um, you know, spent hours and hours with just training, living, you know, making dinners together. Uh, we've been roommates before. It, it, he's a, a guy that I'm great friends with. So it's a, uh, it's a great feeling, you know, that, Training with a guy like that is what prepares you for the stage uh, that we're at today. Um, you know, to make a U.S. team, you got to beat some very, very talented, experienced, and hardworking runners. Um, so it helps to train with that exact demographic of guys every day. Um, have a lot of guys to look up to on my team. Uh, it's it's a really good feeling doing it with Woody. I, I wish Lopez could be here with us. Um, I'm, I'm hoping his hamstring heals up quick, but. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a great feeling. You know, it doesn't get much better than that. Uh, it's a comfort thing in a race, having your teammate there. It's a comfort thing at practice, knowing you're training with one of the best guys in the world. Um, and uh, it pushes me to be better. 
Next question from Tom Shad, USA Today. I know Centrowitz is still yet to race, but what do you think of the Bowerman's Track Club's performance here at trials, especially coming off of all of the distractions with Shelby's situation coming in? Yeah, man, it's it's been a wild two, three weeks. Um, you know, there are a lot of things going on, but we had to focus up. Uh, this opportunity comes once every four years, I guess in this case, every five years. Um, you know, you don't want to be messing around. You don't want to be having your head in a different spot. You don't want to be questioning yourself, thinking about other things. We needed to come here and execute. Um, and our team's done a great job of that, men and women. Um, we've got JT racing later today and Centro, and I've seen their training. I know they're ready. Um, I hope they have uh, can see what the rest of the team has done like I have and, and draw some inspiration, draw some confidence from that. I know, you know, watching some of the women, um, watching the guys on our team just do really well on the U S stage at the trials just gives me confidence. You know, I'm doing similar training. I can run with those guys every day. Um, you know, I might get dropped a little bit on speed days from Centro and JT, but, uh, it does give you confidence just knowing that's the, the, the level of guys that I can hang with. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a, a fun week. Um, you know, lots of emotions, just it's an Olympic trials. This is kind of do a die, do or die for a lot of people. Um, I'm hoping that I have more opportunities in the future, but honestly, you never know. Um, this sport is cutthroat, you know, injuries can pop up, different things can happen. And uh, all you can do is prepare the best you can. And when the opportunity is in front of you, just grab it. Um, there's not much more you can do. So um, I'm really happy that I grabbed the opportunity at these trials and uh, it's, it's gonna be fun to have some teammates in Tokyo. Question from Weldon Johnson. Paul did some sort of gesture at the finish. What was it and what did he say? Uh, yeah, so we finished and uh, we, we kind of hugged each other. It was a, an awkward embrace just because we were still decelerating. Um, but he was like, nice race, man. Um, you know, you pushed me to the line. And uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's a cool feeling. I think we have a really strong team going into Tokyo. Um, I think Woody and, and Paul would agree. Um, it's... Yeah, it's a world-class group. Um, both these guys have run under 13 minutes. Uh, I, I haven't. Um, you know, Paul has some medals. He has incredible international experience. Um, I was talking to Woody the other day, and he, he said he's never raced outside of the U.S. Um, I've raced out of, outside of the U.S. one time. So this, is, uh, this will be a step up for us. And, uh, you know, two, two very talented, hardworking, great runners that, that I'll be teammates with now. And a reminder to the media to please direct your questions to the public chat. If you're currently writing a question, please use the raise hand feature so I know to wait. Another question from Weldon Johnson. USATF has a rule, but World Athletics doesn't, that says athletes shall run in a direct line to the finish. Do you think that means athletes shouldn't drift out? Um, I don't think it's illegal to drift out. Uh, I mean, I guess I don't write the rules or anything, but um that's just what happens on the home stretch uh if you watch most any race um you come off the corner you have momentum generally people are passing you on your right hand side you you naturally kind of drift out and then it's also a, a good strategy to drift out um force people to run a little longer line i mean sometimes it backfires and someone swoops up the middle but generally people flare out um that's just how racing is done in my opinion i don't think that should be illegal or, uh, you know, is, is grounds for a DQ. Even if it was, I, that's not how I would want to win, um, uh, on a DQ like that. So I, yeah, I mean, if I were on the inside lane and I felt someone on my right hand shoulder, I would also drift out. It's just how you race. Okay. Another reminder to please direct your questions to the chat. If you're currently writing a question, please use the raise hand feature. So I know to wait. And I am not seeing any raised hands. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.